What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. Uh, it's international break, so United did not lose or win badly. So <laughs> nobody did, you know, nobody did. Unless you're Gibraltar, then you got thrashed in front of you. You you created history in the wrong way possible, and uh, France is happy as hell right now. But uh, we have a guest. We got John Shin. I'm going to introduce him. He's a football content creator, and uh, he's doing his thing. And I've, I've been watching him and admiring him. Uh, Lee's here, uh, one of the usual suspects. Southampton fan, stand-up comic from England. We're going to talk about the Premier League upcoming games this weekend. I looked at the schedule, and there are, like, four bangers. You know, like, there's some non-traditional teams that are making noise, so you don't want to miss them playing. You don't want to miss who they're playing against. So we got four bangers. And uh, we're going to talk about Everton point deduction. And we're going to talk about, uh, well, Man City and Chelsea also get the same. I have some thoughts on the Man City one, of course, being a United fan. But uh, let's get into it. What's up, John? And what's up, Lee? How's it going? Sorry to introduce you both at the same time. Now you don't <laughs> know which one should talk. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, Lee, Lee, uh, Lee, if you don't mind, I'll just go right away. I just want to say that I just want to take this moment before we go any further to be surrounded by comedians talking about football. This is honestly a dream come true for me. I, I grew up on comedy. Comedy was something that was my life. It's it. I honestly think it saved me. And I, and I have massive right. respect for and admiration for comedians, uh, irrespective of where you practice your comedy or what you do. Like, I think comedy is incredible. And I just, it's, it's an honor for me, for real. Thank you for having me. Oh, dope. Thanks. Uh, Lee, you got a response to that? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm driving like three hours tomorrow to tell dick jokes to people in the Midlands. I didn't know it was, uh, it was, it was, it was doing something for people, but no, no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's dope. And when you say, uh, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. When you say like comedy saved your life, and you grew up on comedy like like could you elaborate on that because because one day you hit me up when you were in the states and we're going to get into that and i was like i i was following you but i didn't know if you were following me or if you knew of me so so just tell me more about what you mean by growing up on comedy and for sure saving your life for sure uh i grew uh, just tell I, us how the- tell us how me and lee saved your life <laughs> or right, i'll end with that because i think that's going to be yeah. the smallest bit respectfully <laughs> uh, Damn. i immigrated to america uh, in 2001 and for me long story short life was hell for me as a kid it was just mm-hmm. one of those things that was just so hard to get assimilated into you know just, um not even going into the whole racial abuse type thing just the idea mm-hmm. of an asian coming to another country learning a new language being accustomed to a new culture was a lot. And uh, my family wasn't in the best positions in terms of financial you know, stability and things like that. So there's a lot of instability and chaos around me in my life. And the first, I think the first set that I actually was just obsessed with was actually Russell Peters. He, uh, one of my friends oh. bought like a bootleg off of his, one of his uh, comedy bits from some some person in, in, in Chinatown. And we watched it together and I remember watching that over and over again. And I was obsessed with comedy ever since then. I always just used to rely on things like that as a source of, you know, keeping me sane, keeping me happy, lighthearted. You know what I mean? And it was always something that I always, uh, I always leaned on for. I think it was a very good emotional support for me in many ways. And ever since then, you know, I used to watch Chris Tucker. I used to watch, you know, all these guys, late night Def Jam poetry, them them sessions, like old school days, you know. And and I grew up in areas that was very heavily, I think I was like probably the only Korean in in the first few elementary schools that I attended. Mostly a Hispanic and African-American based community. So I was always surrounded by people that always had influence to, you know, not only just the comedy, but of course, you know, music and things like that. So Music and comedy and those kinds of arts was, for me, uh, honestly, a lifesaver. It really kept me off my mind, especially as a young child. When you find things so heavy and you know unbearable, a lot of those things really mm. helped me to keep me grounded. Yeah, I was going to ask that. How old were you when you moved here? And did you move I, straight to Queens? Yeah, uh, I was... 
somewhere like 11 or 12 or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. We moved around everywhere in Queens. When we first came here, we, we were getting our ass kicked out every every year. I think. It was, <laughs> we, were on, we were on that eviction wave all day. It was just one of those things where we're just getting kicked every year. But yeah. Yeah, the true American experience. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, we, we're going to make you American the American way. We're going to make you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We're going to give it to you hard. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's bananas. That's, uh, and, you, and you're in Queens and you came out here. Did you, did you guys have family and stuff out here? Um, we had a very, very distant relative, but we were pretty much alone here. I mean, when we first started Mm -hmm. off, we had nothing like, it was just like, I remember I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. We used to go around at like after school, we used to go around collecting like plastic cans and aluminum cans. Get out of here for real. Yeah. Me and my brother, it was like my grandpa. Yeah. We we did whatever we could, man. We we had a little, uh, these laundry wagons and we would just go around looking for these cans. And I remember one day, I think my grandma she went and did like an extra session. She did one of the, she did one of those. You know what I mean? She, she did it like a seven or seven p.m. and an eight p.m. type thing. <laughs> she did a two a day. Yeah, <laughs> she did a double sesh. And I remember she damn. came back with like forty five dollars, and I was like, oh shit, she hit jackpot! Like damn. But yeah, we used to go through a lot of those things. I'm impressed by I'm impressed by that amount. Like I I didn't know it was that lucrative. I I need to get out there after this. <laughs> Go get forty five dollars, but that's pretty impressive, man. I I didn't know it was like that, so it's, it's it's good to know that you've come this far to the point where, like, one of the things that attracted me to your style of like content was the energy. It's like positive, and you call yourself Good Vibes John on Instagram, and I was like, it's different. Like a lot of like content creators feel like. They got to be angry. They got to yell to get their point across. But it was like refreshing because I enjoy football. You know what I mean? For the most part. And I know United ain't doing great right now, but I still, I don't just watch United games. I'll watch other games in case we have a bad one to clean the palate of our bad game. You know what I mean? And to watch some good football because I really, I'm a United fan, but I think I might be a football fan more like football brought me to United, mm-hmm. but a lot of fans like based how the team does on their week or how they project. And like, you're just energy is just like, it was refreshing to just see a content creator that was positive, even when the results weren't the best and to make people laugh. So I think the comedy lessons that you learned growing up as a kid, like have stayed with you. Yeah, for sure. And I think, one thing I didn't want to do was sit in front of camera and and act a fool. You know, of course, acting a fool is fun, but not in the mm-hmm. in the in the, the the just sort of like reactionary, being stupid and screaming for the sake of screaming. That's one thing I didn't want mm-hmm. to do, and right. uh, and I just you didn't want to be of... Arsenal fan TV, basically. Uh, exactly, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it might have helped in terms of drive more traffic potentially. You know, seeing an mm-hmm. American guy screaming at the top of his lungs about you know, a sport that is essentially called football, but he calls it soccer. You know, that might've been an angle, Mm -hmm. but that's one thing that just, I didn't sit right with me. I always wanted to make sure that whatever video I made, it came from the heart. Mm -hmm. It was something that, you know, felt authentic. And usually for me, I usually tend to try and lean on the positive side of things in life. And I just felt like that was just one thing I you know always just always did. So might as well. Yeah. I appreciate you not approaching, approaching it like Lexi Lala style, like doom and gloom. I mean, like, it's like, it's just, yeah, he's just, he's too much. And I used to love him as a player. Like, he was a complete opposite person as a player. Like, that might not be Lexi Lawless. That might be some other dude pretending to be him right now, the way he he does his punditry. But, uh, like, so how did you become a United fan? Uh, So I used to watch Manchester United casually uh, here and there in the early 2000s because, uh Parchi Sung, as you may know, he was he was one of oh, the yeah. biggest, he's one of the biggest Asian pr- football prospects to come out of Europe. He's probably arguably one of the one of Asia's greatest footballers, I think. And mm-hmm. uh South Korea experienced one of the greatest moments in football history in the World Cup 2002. And post World Cup 2002, uh Park followed uh Gus hitting to PSV Eindhoven, and he eventually got the call up from Sir Alex to join Manchester United. But when he was early days, when he was at uh, at Manchester United, I was still very young. 
my we ba- we didn't even have cable, so it was really hard for me to watch those games. And oh, I know you didn't have cable. That's why I'm like, how did he become a United fan? Just based on how you told us it was going when you got there, I was like, so how did he even become a fan? Like, where did so he this, watch this? So this is how I used to watch highlights of Park. So how it used to work was Korea. There was like a channel that ran a Korean network of sports mm-hmm. of Korean football players. So they'd be like, oh, Park ji played. He scored his goal against Middlesbrough or something. And then he did this today. And here is his highlight, but they can't, they don't have the license because it's, it's basic cable. So what they used to do was they would take image screenshots of park. So it'd be, one is this, and the next one is <laughs> lining up the shot. And the next one's the that ball going hilarious. in. Yeah. So that's how I used to keep up. And then eventually after I got into high school. That's called you know, stop motion. Yeah. There you go. In animation. <laughs> <laughs> Like it was even worse than Charlie Chaplin times, but yeah, uh, we, I basically really got super into it uh, around probably near the end of high school. That was when I just fully invested into Manchester United in college. It was a wrap. I, all I did was Manchester United. I, I, I hope my parents don't see this because I literally, all I did was football. I was just watching Manchester <laughs> United, looking up man, like kits, boots, everything was football for me. Yeah, they know now. Uh, they don't, I speak that, they don't speak that good English, so we're good. They don't speak that good English, so <laughs> so very. I, I have to apologize to Park Ji Sung because I always felt for a long time that he was a failure at United, just because I didn't <laughs> get it. But like watching real talk about him, mm-hmm. because you know, it, it was back then. Back then, it was a minute ago, and just when people came in, they just scored and i didn't understand how much he was doing at the time for the team like as a workhorse Mm -hmm. so it it, i just didn't get his position it's just like like now i get busquets i get like uh makalele you know and people like that but i didn't know what a jemmy was like and i wish we had a a a guy like him now you know because mason mount is just strolling across the park as if he, he didn't punch in to go to work like Lee, did you get it? Like when you first saw him, um, I don't know if and I got United. it right away, but it got to a point where like people started realizing every time United had a big game, Fergie would start Park. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, he, "I need him. I need him in there because of the job that he does." Um, mm-hmm. And I think he was underrated technically as well. Like he he, he worked hard every game, and that, but that was like his base level, and then mm-hmm. he could do things above that. Um, you know, he could be a ball winner. He could, he could pass the ball well. Um, he could contribute to the attacks. He was, yeah. Um, uh, and and like John said, you know, he, he's potentially one of the greatest Asian players. He, you know, he won, I think, almost everything there was to win uh, at United. And I think he didn't quite get the flowers he deserved at that time because of he was in the same team as people like Ronaldo and Rooney. Um right who were, you know, the the headline grabbers. Um, But yeah, like I say, people, I think people really cottoned on when it was like every time there was a big game, every time they had one of those classics against Arsenal or every time there was a big final, it's like, oh, Park's playing. Like, you know, he must, he must have the trust. I I got to see him live when I went to, I went to the Champions League final in 2011 against Barca at Wembley. Mm. And I still maintain one of the greatest football like collection of footballers I've ever seen on a pitch. The the 2011 Barca team is the greatest team I've ever seen live. Um, mm. Just because, you know, that classic midfield, Busquets, uh, Iniesta um, and Xavi, Messi was on fire that day. Um, you know, all those guys. And But that United team was also like, people forgot how good that United team was and just how good that Barca team were to do what they did to them. Because that United team, you know, there was Skulls, there was Giggs, there was Park, there was Rooney. Um, you know, it was Van der Sar was in goal. It was like Vidic and Ferdinand at the back, I think, uh, or certainly Vidic. I don't know if Ferdinand was still there. Yeah, they were. They were um, that was the two partnership that played. Yeah, um, no, and just Rio yeah, was kind of old then, that, that, or no? Um, sort of. I don't think he was. Yeah, he was. I think he was maybe sort of late twenties at the time, or early thirties. Okay. Um, but yeah, just I maintain that that the, the the best collection of players I've seen together on a pitch all at once. I think I watched that final like over like during the pandemic and I felt like we had some chances to score early in that game and it felt like we could have been up like two or three and then after that spree it was over they just took over 
and we didn't really stand a chance. We weren't in the game. It just got embarrassing. Yeah, in in um in one of <laughs> in one of Rio's podcasts, he was saying that like during that Champions League final, it was one of the only times ever where he had no answer. He he said he remembers looking at Vidic like. Where are they? Where is everybody? What the hell is going on? How the hell did he just get from here to here? Like he said, they were just tossing around like a salad. And you know, as uh, as Lee mentioned, it's like that Barcelona side to do what they did. I, I think they, I think those guys, in my view, are one of arguably one of the greatest footballing sides ever. I mean, the the way they used to play football, mm -hmm. like it was incredible. They yeah, broke my heart. Watch. Yeah, yeah, it it broke my heart. Like just to be dismantled like that in England. Oh, yeah. They played in London too, right? So it's like yep. basically a home game at <laughs> Wembley Stadium. Like we've we've won the treble there. Not there, but you know, we've won, we just won everything. You know, you have to win parts of the treble there. Like it's like this is familiar ground. And then to just go out there and just I don't know, it was pretty it, it made me feel like how sometimes when I see United like lose now, you know, it's just like a ugh, that was a bad loss, you know. But uh, I, so, what do you feel about the state of United now, like as a fan? Um, to be quite honest with you, I've come to a point where I've accepted the fact that Manchester United are going to take a long time to get back to anything remotely close to Man United under Sir Alex Ferguson. There was a moment. There was a period of denial because I remember. Mm -hmm. I, I remember this interview like the back of my hand because I was watching ESPN ages ago. I think this was right after David Moyes uh, had gotten sacked, and uh, there was a uh, there was a journalist by the name of Raphael Honigstein. He's a pretty po he's a pretty um, mm -hmm. one of the more popular ones. He got asked by one of the panelists on ESPN. He was like, "Raph, like, what's going to happen to Manchester United? Sir Alex Ferguson left, and they're capitulating. What's going to happen?" And I remember Raphael Honigstein going like. They're Manchester United. They'll figure it out. They're going to come back in a few years' time. And I, he's, that, that, that felt like, to me, what now it was a scam, but I was sold. I was like, if Raphael Honigstein is saying this, I'm sold. Uh -huh. And it was just years and years of just bland, bleak. And it was just one of those things where I got to a point. I think I really felt that way after Van Gaal. I was like, all right, this ain't, this ain't turning. This not, this not going to change like this. And um, right. I'm at a point now where I'm, I feel like we've we've made progress, but it definitely has been moments where we take two steps forward and three steps back. We take three steps forward and two steps back. And it was just this like up and down and nothing has been significant enough for me to feel like, wow, this is great. But as much as Manchester United have uh, enjoyed, you know, uh, Eric Ten Hag last season, this season, I don't think it's as really bad as people say right. it to be. And I think it has a lot to do with, you know, the fact that we're Manchester United. I hate to sound like that because I don't think Manchester United are anywhere as sexy as we used to be. But the fact of the matter is Manchester United, they sell headlines, they sell clicks. And if we're doing bad, if we're conceding or if we're, you know, losing, then of course people are going to sort of use that as an opportunity to sort of blow up whatever they're trying to push. And I think Man United... While it hasn't been good, I'm not saying it's been great, but it hasn't been good. While it hasn't been good, I think it, it isn't as doom and gloom as some people perceive it to be. And I think that once their injured players return, once we find a bit more stability, I think Eric Ten Hag is going to be able to enjoy football the way he did last season once again. And I'm, I'm still very confident for this season. Yeah. Like, I look at our midfield on paper, and it's like, like, what if Mount played the way he's supposed to play? We have Amrabat, and we have Bruno Fernandez. Like just naming those three players, that's not a bad midfield. Then you have Manu when he comes back, and you know you can get some something out of Casemiro in spurts, something out of Ericsson in spurts. I believe in uh, Hannibal. I love his energy and the way he runs around. I think he can add a lot and grow into like a team player. So I feel like if on paper if you compare it to other midfields around the league, we should have one of the top midfields around the league. The the main issue is like the injuries in the back that kill us because I don't want to bash Maguire, but he does not look, even when he's playing good, like a professional. Like I was watching him build the ball out the back. It's slow, man. It, it's, it's like how me, you, and Lee would control the ball. And the, the, the lack of pace <laughs> on his passes is like... It's it's it's. I don't think you could 
you know how they can like like track how fast or the pace on the ball i don't even think there's any pace on it's it, it, it's like hey man if you pick it up in the back they'll pick it up in the front but you're taking so much time and he just loves to make that cross field pass to the left i i i, I just feel like he's not elite and johnny evans is not elite you know and we need martinez and i don't even know what the deal is with Iran is right now. There's rumors that he might go to Saudi Arabia or to to Bayern. I heard that rumor today. So who who knows? But then we need we we just you, you need defense. You need defense. Uh, the question I want to ask you too is: uh, Do you get attacked for sounding American and being a social media content person for football? Because I know, like, I went trolling a little bit. But sometimes even when I don't go trolling, like, there was this Aston Villa post about, like, how many games they won in a certain amount of time. Or just some, you know, when they make up stats to make the (laughs) fans feel good. So I just put some laughing faces in the comments. So then, then, then the fans start, like, digging in to who... Who 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 did this? That this person is trolling us and clowning us, and he's like, he's American. He doesn't know anything, and blah, blah, blah. and I always hear that, like like the post that me and Lee put up sometimes, like people are like, what do these people know, or what is well me? What do I know? I'm American, so do you get shit for having for not having a football accent? You should ask Lee. Be like, hey, Lee, what do you think about uh, when he talks football? What do you think? <laughs> I'm great. I, know, I, right? I, get to, I, I get I get to hide behind a British accent. It's it's amazing. You know, it's uh, yeah. I, I can I can spout my terrible opinions at will. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, but uh, just just to go back uh, to your question, uh, you know, I think I I think honestly that recognition has come a long way. And when I first started, I first started making videos in 2011. Very casually, uh, I remember the first video I made was when Man United exited the Champions League under David Moyes. It was against Bayern Munich, and it was just really bad. And I was like, Manchester United should not be playing this way. And I remember I was screaming, whatever. And the first few videos I uploaded, it had like two, three views. And then I started like working with different uh, content creators. And there was a channel. There was a guy, uh, shout out Joe. <clears throat> he had a channel. His name was Mr. Flying Pig HD. He had like two thousand subscribers, and oh, he no, was like, guy. "Hey." Yeah, he was like, hey, you, you want to collaborate with me? And I was like, sure. You know, he and he allowed me to upload videos on his channel as a sort of a guest. And that was mm-hmm. when I first really full out experienced like the hostility towards Americans. Like, uh, like Yank was like a given yeah. plastic. Well, 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 uh, well, it's, okay. it's like when you just moved here and you had to experience <laughs> the hostility of being a Korean. <laughs> Exactly. In America, you experience the same thing as being an American sounding person talking exactly. football. Exactly. So in some ways, I was accustomed to it, right? I'm like, all right, right, right. we're ready for the heat. Round two, let's go. But in right. other ways, I was really hurt. Like, I don't know why I was hurt, but there was this one time I remember because this was when I was to live with my, with my parents and I had a like a monitor in the back of my in the back of my room. So the camera could catch like a small monitor. It was like a 20 inch monitor that I used to just leave so that I could watch movies at night, you know, right on as I'm laying in bed or something. And I remember this one guy, I still remember his name. I, I'm going to drop name drop his fucking punk ass. Is it Lee his name was, No, <laughs> it was Ryan Anderson. This freaking prick. Anyway, this guy, he would comment all the time. Your TV is so fucking small. You yank, whatever, whatever. Oh, but he would always go after my monitor and every comment. He, like, he, knew, he knew it hurt me. He would just always write about the damn small TV. And I used to write back. I, and this is when I was, I didn't know any better. So I used to write back to him. I was like, no, you bitch. This is not a TV. It's a monitor. And I used to fight with him. And uh-huh. that hostility was really scary, to be honest with you. It was, I just mm-hmm. didn't know that. In, I mean, I knew the internet, but I didn't know it could be that nasty. It got to a point where I was getting threats. And it was just one of those things where I realized that like, okay, I shouldn't interact with everybody. Right. I should be careful about who I talk to. And I learned that the hard way, but it was really tough in the beginning. I worked really hard. And if I, I don't really like bigging myself up, but I'd like to think I worked really hard to get to a position where I could be um, sort of, you know, accepted by the entire football community because America does have a bad rap when it comes to football. Yeah, it's like, 
nobody believes anything an American that an American sounding person says about football. You just get dismissed immediately. It's like like we're blondes when it comes to football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that our accidents are blonde <laughs> into football. But uh, so then how, I guess not how, so the, the revenge is this summer, United goes on a tour in America and they hit you up to do a bunch of stuff. And how did that happen? And how was that? Uh, it was a truly a, like a full circle moment for me because uh, I, around a year and a half ago, I was, pretty much at my lowest emotionally and just mentally. I just, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I always wanted to do mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. I couldn't do it and whatever, whatever. And then I thought about a couple of things, including content creating. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go balls deep on doing something that I enjoy doing. I don't care what my parents say. I don't care what anybody says. I'm just going to go, right. go just a hundred percent. So last summer, uh, I just started making content like crazy. It was just content, content, content every day. And I always wanted to do this thing with football kits because i love collecting football kits and uh, mm. i had a retro manchester united kit that i had and i had a pair of them and i can't model for the life of me like this doesn't work in front of camera i could talk footy i could talk comedy have fun blast whatever but if you try to get me in front of camera and sometimes somebody tells me to throw a pose or look sexy that ain't me so i was like all right i'm gonna ask two of my friends that are relatively I'm just glad you know that oh uh, trust me, I know. Trust me, I tried. Uh, cool, I, cool. I've I've had my fair share of L's. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> but no, for real. Uh, so I asked two of my friends. They modeled the retro kits for me, and I sort of did like a creative style of uh, footy video. And mm -hmm. uh, Manchester United's creative director saw that video, and he said, oh, "Wow, this is incredible! Can you make another one for us?" Uh, and they wanted to send me something else. Um, so we they sent me something else. I forgot exactly how it happened, but. That was the start because it just it started it was like wildfire after that it, it was just like contacts were coming in people were reaching out to me and eventually i built that relationship with the creative director there and um they uh, invited me uh, they were hosting they, it was actually this kit right here the the awakening right. before it released they sent me this with in, a, in in that box up there and they were like john this is for you uh please do not share this it publicly until we release it and uh the it, it officially released on sunday or monday and on sat the, the the saturday before they had a a release event and um i brought the shirt with me we went to the event here in new york city and uh, that was like for me like the pinnacle if i've ever reached it i was like this is incredible to be able to work with manchester united to be you know going to man and i also got to work with them in new jersey when they were here for the preseason tour I got invited mm -hmm. to be on MUTV. I've been on MUTV a few times before, but it was always through this right. sort of conversational thing. But this time they invited me to the hotel, the headquartered hotel. They Damn. got and they got me two king bed room, king king beds. I've never <laughs> slept on a king bed ever <laughs> until I moved out. Of them. <laughs> so I has this was this was if I had me a missus, I would have brought my missus with me and I'd be like, look, babe, this is, I'm, I'm doing this. But instead, I brought my friend with me because he was also a Man United fan. So it was just two, right. two bums sleeping on two king beds. But it was incredible because the next day I got to watch Manchester United together with some of the legends. Uh, one of the games that were, um, they were playing in the preseason tour, uh, I believe it was like against RC Longs. I forgot who it was, but basically I got to watch the game with them. I participated in like a podcast episode with the legends. I sat next to Dennis Irwin. Uh, Brian Robson, uh, Andy Cole, Danny, whatever those so guys. Dope. And we, yeah, and it was uh and, and then afterwards we after the session, I thought it'd be just done, dusted, everybody leave, but uh -huh. we just hung out and we just chatted about football and man united for like two hours. It was I'll never forget it. And that was truly oh, like this summer bananas, was like bro. Yeah, and I sat there thinking, like, wow, this is incredible. I saw that happening on your on your page, you know, and like especially when you got you said you have a surprise, you can't tell people, you gotta wait and then seeing it and i was like jealous and happy for you at the same time because it, it just gives me you know i've been struggling with this channel for a minute but there's things i could also do to make it better but I, i'm just kind of busy and 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 you know like i'm like this doesn't work you know what i mean like <laughs> Lee, before you came on i was trying to get this to work to work again with the new interface <laughs> i should have been had this fixed for like years you know what i mean this <laughs> the thing I'm trying to hook it up with has been in existence for decades. 
But uh, that, that's the, that's, that's the most abuse you get. You get more abuse for your mic than your opinions at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I was trying to hook it up with you uh-huh. last week. Mm. I did a test with Lee uh-huh. to see if I could hear him. So the first two minutes of the podcast was me talking through this thing, uh-huh. and then, but it didn't work. You know, I couldn't hear him, so I could disconnect it and go back to this. One of the, the, the comment, the first comment is like, man, the first two minutes of your pod was fire. Like, <laughs> audio, <laughs> audio was perfect. <laughs> and then it just went back to crap. So, yeah, that's oh. like, Lee's right. Uh, the, yeah, but I, I, I'll, I'll get that together. You know, I, I, I don't deserve anything that you got because I need, I just need to fix this. But yeah, that's dope, man. I, I'm, I'm really happy for you. And just because of you, like, that you, good vibes and approach to comedy um, and and to content creation and to football. I was like, yeah, it is better. This one other guy, I think he's a Brazilian who's a Man U fan and he has like good energy too. You know, he's, he's like fun, but everybody else is like, I, I like the United stand. I like, uh, uh, what's his name? Mark Goldbridge, but Mark go, I was driving in a car from Vegas once we went to see a game with another guy that does podcast, Martin. And we was listening to Goldbridge all the way back. And Martin, Martin's a Spurs fan. And he's like, this guy. And Martin is the most pessimistic Polish guy ever. And Martin was like, Jesus, this guy is, is like, like just a downer. He's like, and, it, and I was listening to him. He said, yeah, Goldbridge do be like, you know, like, you know, sometimes he's happy. But, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it, but it, we, we got cut, cut off and we're uh-huh. back. And, uh, you know, I can't even remember what we were talking about. We were we on the drive with, with, with a Mr. Martin talking about, talking about Mr. Goldbridge. Uh, yeah. Goldbridge. And I, and I, and listen, I, I, I love the, 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 I think it's the United stand and there's United people's TV. I listen to all of them and, uh, you know, they, they've, you know, before when they started showing the Premier League in America, the game would be over and that would be it. And you'd be like, <gasps> like, what? and then, these podcasts were accessible on YouTube. And it was like, this is what I wanted, like to like hear more, how people feel, some commentary after the game from like, even if it's not from like people who played or professional pundits, it, you know, it, it's perfect. And you can listen to it all week, leads you up into the game. It's like tailgating all week for the game. So it's perfect. But yeah, it, it's, he, He's been pessimistic lately. And when I say yeah. lately, like the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. So. But I think I think with respect to fan channels, the, the thing that makes mm-hmm. it so great is because now we're in this era where fan channels have almost sort of moved towards the mainstream and right. mass media and big corporations like Sky in particular, if you see what they're doing mm-hmm. now, they're taking a lot of the formats that fan channels used to do and sort of we're all kind of, I think, coming towards the middle ground, which I find exciting mm-hmm. because it pretty much means more opportunities for my fellow content creators. I mean, like Streffer Paddock, shout outs to my guy, Streffer Paddock. Full-time mm-hmm. Devils gave me the first, I guess, quote unquote, big break, you know, to be able to mm-hmm. go on a channel like that. And and back then, this was like David Moy's days when Andy Tate was first on. Yeah, yeah. he was on a, a technicality and doing all his uh, Mancunian things. And, like <laughs> He was like, that was... The golden ages when first when first fa- uh, fan channels started popping off alongside Arsenal fan TV. So, you know, for full time Devils to have that kind of heritage and tradition as a fan channel and to invite me on there and now to see all of these channels having successes and whatnot, it's 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 great to see. No, I love them all. I love the variety of them all. Everybody mm-hmm. can't be the same, but exactly a lot of them had the same tone until I stumble upon yours, and that's what makes you unique. You know, like. Like I'll still listen to a Goldbridge rant all the way from Vegas to LA, you know, you know, it's like, it's just something that's, you know, ingrained in like my routine. Like if I jump in a car to go anywhere, run errands, it's, it's all those channels, all of the ones you just mentioned, you know, you know, I like, I like flex. I like, you know, Sam, I forgot what Sam's is. He's, he's just a loner. He refuses to do anything on talk sport and he produces his content and he, he has the gong. I listen to them all, fam. 
uh, what are there, are there are there any Southampton like ones, Lee, that you listen to? I mean, there might be. Um, <laughs> there's not much of a there's not much of a of a market for it. Our fan base is uh, is fairly small. We um, it was weird though. Like we we had some spells where we had a bit more reach. Uh, like we used to have mm. a um, a Japanese centre back called Mai Yoshida. Mai Yoshida. Um, mm who's a really good player and uh, he's actually back training with us at the moment in the uh, um, he came and, and and did some some stuff with us because I think he's at LA Galaxy now but I, don't, I think in one of the international breaks oh, wow. or something he came over um, but he um, or because the, the, the season's on the break sorry um, he, he came over and, and trained with us but when, when he was playing for us we used to have so many uh, Japanese fans turn up um, to yeah, the stadium um, and they would all have Yoshida shirts or after the game, they'd be waiting with their Japanese national team shirts to get him to sign it and stuff. Um, so that was pretty cool. Like um, you can, you can see why clubs who, you know, they, they get the benefits from that. Like, I don't think a club these days because of obviously, you know, the pressure to perform, they would never sign a player who is purely commercial benefit and can't do it on the pitch. Cause like when we had Yoshida, mm-hmm. he was one of our best center backs. He was, he was a really solid player and that's just an added benefit that comes along with that. But I think it's, um, it's it's interesting when you see because I'm like, whenever I, like as a kid when I was a Southampton fan, like we were never the fashionable club. Like no one, like all my fans were fan, all my friends were fans of big clubs, um, uh-huh. and then it was weird. It was always weird to me, like it, it, like when I see people taking an interest in the club, I'm like, you've travelled around the world to come and watch my shitty team. <laughs> like why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, you're, you're, you're giving yourself a world of pain here. Um, but it's it's cool to see, and that's just the the global pull of the Premier League and also, um, you know, although I'm having fun in the championship and we're winning games mm-hmm. and, um, you know, we're, we're playing more games and, you know, there's a better vibe around the club now. It's why I want to get back to the Premier League because it's just, the championship's fun, but you feel like your club lacks some relevance when you're down there. Um, whereas in the Premier League, it's like, oh, the whole world is watching what you do, even if you're not one of the top clubs. Um, mm-hmm. you, it just feels like it means... Um, a little bit more as much as I yeah as much as I love the championship and as much as I'm looking forward to driving to Huddersfield on Saturday um, to hopefully see three points um, and then do a show in Manchester afterwards so it's um, yeah it's 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 fun supporting us, but yeah, I haven't really seen much out there. But I've not really gone looking for it. I know there's a couple of like Twitter accounts that post like news and things like that, but I I don't think anyone's putting the time into it because they probably wouldn't get the views. <laughs> Is, is Southampton, speaking of Southampton and, and the spotlight, is Southampton one of the clubs that's thinking of suing Everton for going down? Or when you went down last year, so you got nothing to do with it? Or um, like... No, no we, 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 we've we been mentioned. I don't know. Apparently, the the insider's source at the club said that it's just being monitored. It's not, there's no concrete stuff. It's just that, but I mean, we would have some barefaced cheek if we were to pull a lawsuit out. <laughs> given how badly we played last year. Like it wasn't even a, we went down by a minuscule amount. It was like, no, we were just bad last season. We, we didn't deserve, um, we didn't deserve a single thing out of that season. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would be, I would be embarrassed if it happened as a fan. Um, I think anyone taking legal action in football, it's a little bit, ooh, um, you know, unless there's real cause for it, and we haven't got reasonable cause for it, so um, I hope we stick clear of that. Um, I can kind of understand why some other clubs want to get involved, but mm-hmm. um, I think with a lot of other clubs as well, you know, unless they're ran immaculately, people in glass houses and whatnot, um, you know, I think all the clubs that went down last year went down for a reason, right? And when, when you heard about the, the 10 point deduction, like as, there was a a documentary about a school in uh, college football that got the death penalty when they, when uh, I forgot, like they committed some illegal actions and then they got kicked <laughs> out of like division one football in America, which is, you know, is huge. And it, they called mm-hmm. it the death penalty. Like John, how did you feel when you heard about what happened to Everton? Like what was going through your mind? Um, I honestly felt like that deduction was harsh, you know, if, to be completely mm-hmm. honest, like I, I was doing some, a bit of research to try and create some content and, and also to gain some context on what mm-hmm. that was. 
And I saw that, you know, in the past history of not even just the Premier League, but in the first division, like including the the late 80s and the early 90s, like the most they saw deduced or deducted was like, you know, one, two, one points, two points. I mean, Portsmouth went into administration and they got docked points less than <laughs> Everton, you know, like to go into administration, that means you're gone. You know what I mean? Like it's this, that's a big one. And Everton spent mm-hmm. like what? A little over 20 mil 20 mil euros or pounds on on stadium renovation things like that i mean look don't get me wrong if you're breaking the law you're breaking the law if you're breaking the rules there's punishment for it but there are other clubs that i shall not name until somebody else names them first so i can you I'll know, name them you know what i'm no but like i got you back <laughs> but to see 10 points deducted i think is very harsh because things like that you know it has a ripple effect everton are a club don't get me wrong with the history and the prestige of the club uh, uh, in Liverpool, if they go down, maybe the club wasn't expecting a 10 point deduction. And then all of a sudden that becomes relegation battle and they actually do go down. And then whatever financial sort of strategy they had all of a sudden goes bomb and they have to redo it all. And then all of a sudden now they're stuck in the championship. And then all of a sudden their finances get messed up. That could potentially mean horrible news for Everton. That's the, like, like literally a, a, the future of the club is in jeopardy. And I just feel like it was, pretty unfair i think i mean look punishment is punishment but i thought that was i think that was just overkill in my part mm. yeah i feel bad for the fans i have to say that i wouldn't want i don't I, you know, I don't wish that on my worst enemy but the the premier league and just european football is built like that where three teams go through that every year anyway it's not administration but you know you don't get a certain amount of points you go down you get deported you know what i'm saying so like this is and this is a business and you have to run your business well or it's going to fail anyway right you know and uh if the fa you know the premier league doesn't like show some teeth then people are going to think like this is a really big moment for the premier league to like put their foot down and say hey man these rules are real and you, and sometimes I don't even think it's an example. Like the example is what's going to come afterwards. Do you think it's too harsh, Lee? Um, yeah, I, th- I think so. Um, like John was saying, it's it's a real unprecedented um, level of severity on it. And from what I've read, I mean, because I think, you know, finances are complicated. I think fans don't always understand the full picture um, and I, I don't get the full ins and outs. I think a lot of it's to do with the funds they've put in to build the new stadium as well yeah, a lot of and, how that, and how that's been structured. And I, it sounds like it's um, a, you know unfair the way they've gone about it. Um, and I think it's always a hard one to lump it in with the likes of Man City as well when and Chelsea when I think all of the situations are slightly different. Um, with City, I think it's sort of, you know, the bogus sponsorship deals being pumped up um, and the owners putting money in in certain ways, which are sort of, you know, they they are, they are financial doping. <laughs> um, so, whereas I don't think, you know, I mean, at least City have got some shit to show for it. Everton have got nothing to show for it. Um, neither of Chelsea really at the moment. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting one. And um all I can hope is because because I, I do think it's harsh. All I can hope is that Everton can use it to kind of galvanize them now, kind of backs to the wall, like everyone you know, everyone against that's, this kind of mentality. They've been playing well recently. That's the that's the problem. The next game is United, and I don't want them <laughs> to, to be like circle the wagons and be like, oh yeah, it's us against them, and we're the next them. Like I don't want that. Like oh yeah, they're, that they're coming out with the fuck the fuck next world week. mentality against you guys. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's they were, happening. They they were already kind of <laughs> doing it before this. You know what I mean? Because mm. I was like, I watch Everton. I was like, their midfield, that's a tough midfield to like deal with. Like they they hustle. And then that coach, mm. he makes them hustle. There's no, there's no body getting a free ride on that team. Everybody has to like <laughs> bust their ass. You have to bust your ass to 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 play for Everton. So mm. I feel like the 10 points is a reflection of what is going to happen to City and possibly Chelsea. But let's just stay Mm -hmm. on City. Like, say the league is going to be like, this 10 points is a lesser example of what we're going to do to City. But 
the point, the thing is with City, you could deduct 50 points from City. They're so good, they're going to stay in the league. It don't even matter. It's like, if you take 50 points from City, they may finish 10th. <laughs> like 15th the most. So they're going to be in the league. So they're either going to win this legally, illegally, by like dragging us out in court and using all their money to fight and like make the charges lesser. But if you take points from them, they're still going to stay up because they can, it, like, so they won't be in Champions League or the Europa League or the Conference League for, like, one season. Right after that, they'll they'll bounce back. So I feel like this is, they did this to Everton, and everybody's hoping this will affect City, but I don't think everybody's thinking about how good City is. Like, they might not it might not do anything. They'll, they'll still stay in the league because that's how good they are. Like, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on how this will affect City? I'll tell you this right now. This is, uh, I, will, I will respect Manchester City if they go all the way down to the same league as Wrexham, right? And Wrexham got Ryan Reynolds and, and Rob McElhenney. Man City can get Jason Sudeikis. You know what I mean? I love Ted Lasso, <laughs> but when I found out he was a Man City fan, my heart broke. And oh, when I word. saw Pep Guardiola's bald ass showing up on season three, I was heartbroken. I was like, why is he on my show? <laughs> I'm not allowed. Let him may tell him, well, make a welcome to Wrexham, but welcome to Manchester City. You know what I mean? Get get a docu going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want Manchester City to just get 50 points deducted or 70 points deducted. Because like you said, Ian, they're going to still be in the Premier League. My yeah. point is we need to be have we need to see transparency. We need to see why Everton got deducted. If if Everton got deducted 10 points because of X, Y, and Z rules that were broken, we want to see why clubs like Manchester City have been charged with allegedly 115 charges. We want to see which ones are severe, which ones are not so severe, which ones are whatever it is, and how they go about it. Because if we don't see that kind of transparency, then it's just corruption all over. And I, and and I, as much as I am an optimist and as much as I love positivity, I'm reluctant. I'm, I don't have much... You know, I don't I want to say hope, but I don't really think the Premier League will and can do much against a giant like Manchester City. Ian, like you said, they're gonna just dump millions on lawyers and, and legal obligations and all these things, and Premier League's gonna get dragged, and it's gonna be one of those things where it probably will get brushed a little bit under the rug. But it's a win-win. Like if you deduct 50 points from City, everybody will know the league is serious, like the Premier League, but City gets to stay up which is a marquee team in the Premier League. And, and City gets to say, they get to circle the wagons and come back. Now they've paid their debt to society and they're still in the league. <laughs> so, it, like, you, they can't say they weren't punished. It might make them never try to do it again. Who knows? Like, you know, I don't know what type of personalities are running the thing. I don't know if they'll, like, but it, 50 points, the way City's playing, like they've scored a hundred points in a season. You you need forty points to stay up. <laughs> they they, <laughs> they can stay up by ten. I feel bad for the teams that get relegated after a team got docked, docked 10, 50 points. Like, what do you do? Yeah, you know? I think there's I think there's also a little bit of a fear though from the league that maybe if they poke the bear with with like City and Chelsea, that it could reignite the like the Super League calls, if they if, if those teams go, well, if that's how you're going to treat us, then you know, fuck you. We're going to go and we're going to go and re- try and rejoin this thing. I think you know the fans would maybe have something to say about it, but I don't know if uh, if the fans of those clubs would maybe turn on the league as well um, if they got really severe deductions. I think it does stink a little bit of the Premier League are doing it to Everton because they can um, as well. I think it will be really telling how they treat the. Um, how they treat the other teams. Don't you think they had to do it to Everton? I don't know too enough about the the circumstances to like like I say it feels harsh and having read into it, it does feel harsh. I don't know if they had to do that to Everton. Um I think maybe a less severe point deduction, but I think Everton will stay up anyway. So I think they'll be fine right. regardless. But yeah, I mean I'm I'm really, really intrigued to see, you know, how they lay it out um in terms of the other clubs. I feel like we all feel sorry for Everton, just empathetically for some reason. You know, they're not a team you naturally hate, but Man City is a team 
you naturally hate. So it's like, it's like, it's just the way people naturally hate United for all our years and decades of success. You know what I mean? So like, we all feel like this treatment is harsh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, John, what do you think about United's chances this weekend? Like based <clears throat> off now that, you know, we're playing, let me see, are we home or away to goddamn Everton? I believe we are away. We're away, yeah. That's going to be tough. Like those fans after the deduction, the first team to walk into that crazy ass place. Like that, they're like they're all, it's, we're in, and we're not playing good. We got injuries. It's Rashford back. Like we just yeah, he came off the bench for of England today. Oh, he did. All right. So. Look, like uh, this is honestly, uh, I, look, I'm not trying to sound like uh, main character energy, but for some damn reason, mm-hmm. Manchester United always seem to go against these teams with this new manager bounce, fucked everybody against the world type shit. Like, I, I don't know why mm-hmm. we always have to do. We have to we always have to welcome <laughs> yeah. this shit. And uh, just one of those yeah. things where it frustrates me. But uh, like you said, as much as we do have this level of sympathy and 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 almost pity for a club like Everton because of whatever reason. At the end of the day, this is a results business, and Manchester United. Unfortunately, whether we feel we feel sympathy for Everton or not, we have to win, and we have to mm-hmm. win it convincingly. We're not in a position to bargain. If we if we were sitting undefeated record, and you know every if we 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 had Rashford scoring ten goals already, Hoyland scoring ten, Bruno scoring ten, then I'll be like, ah, right, you know, let's just maybe bring the Rezies on, you know, let Everton mm-hmm. score two, we score three, or something. I don't know, maybe something else. Maybe I would feel a little different towards it, but unfortunately, right now we have to win and. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but I think Eric Ten Hag will know that. I think he is a manager that is experienced enough to know that when the emotions are running high, you can almost take that into advantage. You know, literally receiving the ball, rather turning or rather on the half turn, you can literally stand there and two legs will come flying at you because of the emotions. And and these are the types of things that I'm, I'm sure somebody as experienced as Eric Ten Hag will keep in mind while he's preparing his uh, tactics for the upcoming game. It's going to be tough. It's gonna to be tough, but uh, but I I think I think we can still get a result away from him. I'm scared, bro, because <laughs> <laughs> this this is the type of environment. This is like when we went to the Europa League. To, what was that? Mm-hmm. Sevilla last year. Mm-hmm. This is some Galatasaray type environment. Welcome to hell. We're about to step in to this weekend. <laughs> it's it's gonna be bananas because those fans like they're already. I, I, listen. It, this is this is it, it, it's crazy. This is t- deducting ten points from Everton is almost like giving them the new coach bounce, like you were saying. And who wants? Who, we don't need that. We got our own problems that we're making and that are organically happening. So I'm definitely worried about that game. Uh, I was gonna ask Lee. Just you know, Lee's in a championship. It, it's it's. Last year, and for the length of the podcast, he's always been in the Premier League, you know. But the good thing about him being in the championship, not that he thinks this is good, is that you get to hear what's going on in the championship, you know. <laughs> and uh, so who are you playing this week and what you got to do? Uh, we're playing Huddersfield. We're away. Um, and they're not the strongest team. I think they're one place outside relegation. Let me just check the table. Um, yeah, they're one place. They're twenty first out of twenty four, and it's mm-hmm. um, I think it's three down. Yeah, there's three down. So, um, they they're hovering. Um, they sat their manager. They had Neil Warnock, the old veteran. Oh, at you the start got of the it. season. Uh, no, they fired him. They fired him. He's gone. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a small. Uh, they, move. they did away with him. Well, he kept him up last year. They brought him in as like the the, the rescue mission um at the end of last season because they were struggling and he kept them up but it's one of those ones where it's like oh you should just fire him immediately after he keeps you up yeah I never, he's, not a, I never... he, he's not he's not a builder he's a he's a salvage yeah. merchant like that's yeah. that's what that is he's a he's an allardyce he's a you know he, he's in that mold so um yeah they fired him and they hired uh darren moore who's actually i i rate darren moore he's a he's mm-hmm. a good manager he he's the guy who got sheffield wednesday promoted in difficult circumstances, asked for a pay rise, and the manager and the chairman just disagreed, and then he walked. 
um, and now Sheffield United are bottom of the league. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday, sorry, not Sheffield United. Um, so he he ended up getting hired by Huddersfield. I think that's a solid appointment for them. Um, and they they their squad's okay. Um, it's not bad. So we won't get like a a walkover up there. I don't think. Well, I th- I think we're the better team. I think we'll win, but we'll have to earn it. Um, they've they've got a you know a tidy team. Um, they'll they'll be they'll be difficult. But uh, this is my first trip to Huddersfield since 2010. Um, me and my brother drove up there in 2010 in League One. That's how Damn. low we used to be. Um, <laughs> we drove up there in watched us in League One and we lost. It was a bad game. I think it was two 0 to Huddersfield. Um, and it was it was depressing. Um, so I'm recreating that. Let, let's see if uh, no, I can't be really as bad as. It can't be as bad as it was last time. So, um, but yeah, like I was saying before, I got I got booked on a on a show in Manchester as well, which is about an hour and a half, an hour and a bit away from Huddersfield. So, I'll drive up in the morning. I'll watch the game in the afternoon. Over to um, it's, it's a, a town just outside Manchester where I'm doing the show called Northwich. Um, so I'm doing like a show in a little theatre there, and then driving home afterwards. So it's going to be a full day of, of football and comedy. Hopefully, both the game and the show go well <laughs> um, which one do you want to go well a bit the most <laughs> oh that's a good one <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> let me see who you what, what what do you love more like <laughs> what's, what's, uh, <laughs> i mean that's a that's a tough question um i mean the the show probably because it would be the it's it's the last thing i'm doing that day so I at least want to end on a high, even if it's been depressing. So you, want to get one, the... <laughs> so you want to get like one point out of the day. Yeah. <laughs> like if the I show mean, yeah. goes well and the game goes bad, <laughs> then you get, that's, that's a tie. That's, at least that's one point. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 if both going badly would crush me because after the show, it's like a, oh, yeah. a, th- a, a three and a half hour drive home. Oh, Jesus. Um, so if both go badly, it's going to be, it's going to be a sad drive. Um, and if, uh, yeah, Ho- hopefully, hopefully though, I think there's, a, there's a strong chance of both going well. Um, I'm feeling yeah. pretty, uh, pretty sharp on stage at the moment. So I'm, I'm fairly confident in my, um, in my set right now. Um, cause I'm hammering it to death right now. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm confident in that the football it's football. Who knows? Uh, we're favorites, um, which always worries me. I'm, are you the favorite? Sort of... Are you the favorite in Manchester? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think there's always a little bit of uh, like you feel like you're playing on a way turf when you have the southern accent and you go up up north. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it's a fairly the 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 town the show's in is is fairly neutral. I don't think I'm going to be getting too much hate from people. <laughs> um, I'm confident I could be funny enough for them to like me. But uh, yeah, I mean the game. I, I'm I'm the sort of anxious person where like if we're favorites. I feel that I'm like, ah, oh, you know, the expectation is that we're going to do this. Ooh, it's going to be hard to meet that, but we we played well going into the international break. It came at a bad time for us because we were, we were in form, but some of our players on international duty have played really well. Stuart Armstrong scored for Scotland against Norway. Um, and, and, you know, Norway are a half decent team at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, pleased to see him do that and uh yeah we've, we've we've got some good form going into it so I'm, I'm confident we can we can do something but it just you know it's football's just so unpredictable that's why we love it and hate it in you know equal measure because it's uh there's there's very few givens when unless you're a man city or someone there's very few like oh yeah this i'm i'm a hundred percent confident here i'm never a hundred percent confident before any game yeah, the only unpredictable thing Man City has to go through is like this: whether they're they're gonna get like <laughs> points deductions in court, like whether they're gonna get caught or get away with like the crimes that they committed. You were gonna say something, John? I'm sorry. I know we got a limited amount of time. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, like, let's be real. Saint Mary ain't paying these bills. You know what I'm saying? Like, we better hope. <laughs> I, I hope both go well for them. But uh, look, come on, the show's gotta go well. Let's do it. Come the on. Show. <laughs> you ever been in that yeah, position, no, like? I mean, I still get paid. I still get paid if the show goes badly. So, um, no, that's but, true. <laughs> uh, but no, I'd, I'd like, to, I'd like to play there again. So, um, yeah, <laughs> um, I, 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 yeah, I, I definitely need that to go well. Uh, so, 
Uh, and then any quick thoughts on Liverpool versus Man City? We'll do that and then we'll just wrap up because that's a big game for Liverpool. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like they had last season off because of their injuries. They weren't in the top four. And this season, they've been like, you know, they bought some players at a great preseason, great transfer market. And Klopp has got these new kids, you know, the second cycle, like doing well. But the only way to know if you're back back is a game like this. So what are your feels on this, John? Um, I honestly, as a Man United fan, I couldn't give a toss about how the results went. But, <laughs> but from my perspective, <laughs> trying to figure out how the results might favor us, we know mm-hmm. that it's going to be really tough to catch up to either one of them. But I think Man City right. sort of respectfully have a bit more of that edge than Liverpool, as you've seen in the past few years. So I mm-hmm. guess if Man City win, then... If Man City win and if we take the result against Everton, uh, Everton, that only gives, I think it was like a three-point deficit or four points between us and Liverpool, which is not that big at all. Or Sorry, right. three points. Yeah, that's 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 a game difference right there. And, and that'll help us close the gap with Liverpool and, and get us back into the top four positions, which would be a bit of an easier cushion for us. But I'd love to see them both just capitulate in a nil-nil draw. That would be fantastic for me. But yeah, um, either way for me, I think it'll be a, just from a neutral perspective, though, watching that football is going to be very, very intense. I know Liverpool is going to be doing whatever they can to try and, you know, put that statement on, letting the Premier League know that this season they're back and, and, and getting a statement winning against Man City will definitely do that. But Man City in particular will also be scared of not just uh, Liverpool, but Arsenal, who's been breathing down their necks this whole time. So, so they're going to be also uh, in a bit of a in a bit of a tense situation, if you will. So it's going to be fun to watch both of them. But as a Man United fan, I'm looking for zero zero. Right. I mean, I think if some goals are going to be scored, it could be a possible tie. <laughs> of course. But, but but with goals, but yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. So listen, man, listen, we have a limited amount of time on my Zoom. I don't want to. Re up this thing again. We already <laughs> got to piece this thing together. And listen, I keep it unprofessional. You feel me? Like this from the existence of this podcast. Uh, like we don't got good sound. We get cut off in the middle of it, and we just <laughs> <laughs> we paste the shit together. And we, you 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 watch the edit of this. It'll probably be no edit. It'll just have the jump from the thing, but. <laughs> That's just listen, man. Oh, it's all vibes, baby. It's all vibes. It's, it's all it's all vibes. I, I listen. I, I need to fly out again so we can get in the studio again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, like when there was there was a oh there was a wonderful episode this season where he came to LA and all four of us was in the studio. Oh, the camera angles, the wow. whole it's, it's, it's beautiful. Ne- never happen again. But listen, man, that that was a. If you guys want to go back in the file and see the audio, listen to the. Mwah. Ooh, it's fantastic. <laughs> we need to start a, start, a, start a crowd a crowdfunder for for <laughs> my flights because flights are expensive right now. I need to I need to get back out of there. Yeah, we got a gold fund <laughs> lead flying out here every Monday <laughs> so that we can get a perfect episode, y'all. <laughs> Lee, I don't know how it is out yeah. there in England, but you can maybe go collect some cans like me and my grandma used to do. You can get that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> full circle. That's 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 podcasting, that's ladies circle. and gentlemen. Yeah. How many how many cans per flight is it? That's the math. Oh, that, I, you better you better be collecting a lot. I'm about to say, like, I think flights at the moment. Are, I mean, if I convert it to dollars, you're looking at like at least five hundred and something, um, maybe more. Flight flights are crazy expensive right now. Um, and uh, I used to have uh, I used to have an ex girlfriend whose mum worked for British Airways, so I used to get cheap mm. flights, and that, that that went to shit a few years ago. So mm. um, <laughs> that was uh, let's have a look dollars to pounds let's dollars dollars to cans. What do you look <laughs> dollars <at>? to cans? <laughs> <laughs> dollars to cans. <laughs> oh. Pounds to cans. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> dollars. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. we're looking at like a, a like minimum like five hundred and sixty dollars right now for flights. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's right, um, it's hard. It's harsh right now. Yeah, it's harsh. Well, listen, I'm going to wrap this up before we get cut off. I appreciate both of you being on. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, Lee's up. It's like what what time in the morning? Uh, I've just gone two a.m. Just two a.m. <laughs> so you know, always appreciate your presence to join us. Thanks for recording the second half of this. Not only did you come on as a guest, but you got employed for free. 
for this episode. <laughs> because I hope it sounds okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, listen, it couldn't sound worse based on how I recorded it before. It might sound better. Yeah. Who knows? We'll, 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 we'll know. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll text you my email so you can send mm. it to me. But yeah. everybody uh, listening and watching, thank you all for listening and watching. We love you. Be good. Have fun. Enjoy football this weekend. And peace.